a person's life. When God's grace comes upon a person's life, the person now is given the ability, the power to perform even beyond that person's imagination. What you think you can't do, you are able to do it. That is you talking about turning little thing to big thing. And you hear people talk about, oh, how did you do this? And you hear the person says, oh, it's the grace of God. That's the work of grace. Because literally, as in, as simple as it is, you can't do it. But when the grace of God comes in, then you receive that empowerment to do that thing. And that little thing will just turn to something big. And people will be wondering, oh, how did you go about it? And you hear the person say, it's the grace of God. Because even the person doesn't understand. That's the work of grace. Grace is also, someone said grace is being kind. Yes, grace is being kind. Grace is a gift. Generous, being generous. Yes, grace is a gift, being generous, being kind to other people. Someone said grace is light or something. Grace is light or what? Yes. Grace is a light. Yes, grace is the light. Because when you are generous, when you are kind to someone, definitely you are making someone happy. You are showing care. You are showing love to another person. So, in fact, when I was asking that question that what is grace, I was expecting someone to tell me, oh, it's a prayer. <laughs> you know, when we go to church, after church, there's this benediction. You will say, let us share the grace. And everybody will start. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. Or if people forgot that, we call it the grace. So grace means a lot of different things. Grace can be, oh, someone is generous, someone is kind, someone is loving. Grace can also mean empowerment from God to grace. do something you can't do on your own. <clears throat> grace is a gift. From is a God. gift that is given to us from God. And you know, the, the, the funniest part, in fact, the funniest part of grace is we do not do anything to deserve that grace. We do not do any work or we did not, it's not by our work. It's not what we did that earned us that grace. It is given to us by God. But as children of God, we need to work to get that grace. You need to act to get that grace. We need to act in that grace. You know, God has given us that grace. What grace? Okay, if I may ask you now. You've said different things. You've mentioned different things about grace. Oh, grace is kind. Grace is a light. Grace is turning little things to big things. So what do you think? What do you think? When we, when we talk about grace, and now we are talking from the Bible. Show, I want you to concentrate, please. Okay. So when we are talking now as children of God, we want to look at the Bible because God said we should keep meditating on his words. We should keep meditating, you know, reading your Bible day in, day out. The more you get to know him, the more of God you have in you. So now we want to go into the Bible. When we talk about grace, what comes to your mind from the Bible? Do we have people in the Bible that received God's grace? Or do we have people in the Bible that, yes, received God's grace or God was gracious to them or God showed, gave them grace as in to do something? Do we have people in the Bible that God showed them grace? Do we have people in the Bible we have a lot of people in the Bible that God showed grace to, that God gave grace to. So can you think of anybody in the Bible, in the Bible, now we are talking about the Bible, that experienced God's grace? A lot of people in the Bible. So we've said that grace, now we've said that grace is something that is freely given to us from God. 
and it's not about what you do. It's not because I'm righteous, righteous, or it's not because, oh, um, 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 it's not because I'm always going to church. It's not because I'm always saying my prayers. Grace is someone that something that God give, gave to us freely. It was given to us freely. So can we give examples? Can we um, cite examples of people that received God's grace? You know, the ability to do something that you were not able to do, that you, you can't even think of doing, but you received grace from God to do that thing. Okay, even before we go into the Bible, even in school, you know, when, when your teacher teaches after the teaching and all that, and you know, sometimes after reading, okay, maybe a test is coming up and you know, you went through it and we are just finding some parts difficult, like, oh, I've been reading this particular part or you've been trying to solve a math problem and you can't even get through it. And you just said a prayer like, God, help me, give me grace to pass this exam. Help me to pass this exam. Give me grace to understand. And at the long run, you are able to understand this, um, the math or the, the, the question and you are able to solve it. You know, there are different ways in which we experience God's grace. There are different ways in which we experience God's grace in our lives daily as children of God. So I'm just choosing that as an example. Something you think you cannot do, but you were able to do even beyond what you think you can. That is the grace of God. Are we following? Yes. Do we understand? Yes. Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Okay, so yes. Of people in the Bible, people you think that received God's grace in the Bible, that God showed grace to. Were you in church last week Sunday? If you are not in church, did you? I don't know. Were you online? Did you connect to? Were you connected or something to 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 the church service? Because last week, Sunday, we even talked about grace. And um, during this um, so, um, workers' meeting, we had examples from that meeting of those that received God's grace. So we have a lot of people in the Bible that received that grace from God. Anyone? Anyone? Okay, for me. Eh? Okay, if you're not saying anything, so I'm going to cite some examples of those people and we need to work on our bible study we need to work on our bible study do we read our bibles at all i know we do religion in school i know we do religion in school do we listen to all those stories all those stories from my book of my book of bible stories you know it's not every time you watch cartoon it's not every time you watch cartoon sometimes when you go to youtube and you type a story from the bible and you put it on YouTube, you will see the animation um, type. You will see a lot of different Bible stories. It's not every time you want to play on Fortnite or you want to play cartoon. We should also know the Bible as children of God. We should also try and read, read the Bible. Let us know the, word of, the words of God, okay? So I'm giving you as an assignment now. It's not every time you watch cartoon on, 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 on YouTube. Sometimes just type a story, a story from the Bible on YouTube page. You will see it will come up. And we can learn from all these stories. A lot of stories, Bible stories for children. And you will really enjoy them. 
So it's an assignment. Not every time. Next time you are going to watch a cartoon or something, don't watch a cartoon. I want you all to watch a story from the Bible. Any of the story you can think of, whether Noah, whether the story of Esther, whether the story of um, De De Deborah, whether the story of um, Namite woman, whether the story of any no anyone you can think of, the story of Abraham, the story of David, the story of um, Isaac, the story of Joseph, all those things are on YouTube. So please, I want to give it an assignment. Next week, Friday, God's grace, I will make sure I'm online to ask you, I will ask you, which of those cartoons, Bible characters did you watch on YouTube? Are you going to do that? Yes. Okay. So next week, Friday, I'm going to ask you, next time you are going to watch a cartoon on YouTube, don't watch a cartoon. I want you to watch a story from the Bible. Just type it on the YouTube. You will see it will come out. You can choose any of the stories you want to, to watch. Whether Joseph, whether Isaac, Abraham, whether the story of Jesus, any of those stories, they are on YouTube for children. You can watch them. So I want to cite an example of people that enjoyed God's grace. And my example is going to be from the Old Testament. You want to say something, Shion? Do you want to say something? Yes, I I watch Bible stories too. Okay. I watch Bible stories. Okay. Okay. You want to say something? Um. So, yeah. Can we also watch Superbook? It has lots of Bible star stories in it. Can you watch Superbook? It has um Bible. It has Bible stories. I watch. Yes, I there watch there are Bible, Bible stories on Jesus. internet. Yes. Bible stories on internet for children. Damilola, what is it? Or mute yourself and talk. Uh, one of the person who felt God's grace was Shred Rakim Ishak and Abendigo. How did they enjoy God's grace? That when uh, they were thrown in fire and then there were four people and God was with them. <laughs> okay, God was with them. Okay, I want to cite an example. An example is David. Do we all know David? Yeah. David in the Bible, King David. Yes. So if you look at the life of King David, David was a shepherd boy, right? Yeah. David was a shepherd boy. So when he was in the field, taking care of sheep for his father, if anyone had told him then that he is going to be king, do you think he was actually going to believe the person? Hello? Yes. Yeah. David was a shepherd boy, a shepherd boy. He was always in the fields taking care of sheep, his father's sheep, okay? If someone had gone to him then and told him that he's going to be king in Israel, do you think he would believe the person or not? He would no. believe the person. He would not believe. He would not believe the person, thank you. Because he was just watching over his father's sheep. You know, in the morning, he wakes up, he will go to the field, take the sheep and make sure they are well fed. He makes sure that none of them get lost. Then what was he doing? While he was busy looking after the sheep, he will just be there playing with his violin, playing songs, singing unto the Lord. He never in his wildest dream thought of being a king, chill, chill. I want you to concentrate, thank you. So you can see how God raised him from being a shepherd boy to being the king of Israel. Okay. So that is a definition of grace. That's the grace of God upon his life. Even when the prophets came, prophets, when, when Samuel came, 
and all his brothers. He was not even at home. Daniel, um, David was not at home. David was in the field, watching over the sheep, making sure they are, they are fine and nothing is happening to them. He was not at home when Samuel came to his father's house. And his brothers were paraded in front of the in, in front of um, Samuel. Samuel was the prophet. And the father was, okay, he came. Samuel came and told the father that God has sent him into his house to anoint, to anoint a king. Okay. And what happened? Yes, David was playing up. Yes, up, not violin. Sorry for that. So, you know, and Samuel came and told the father that God has sent him to his house to anoint one of his sons. And even David's father never, never in his dream thought of David. He brought out David's brothers and as they were coming out in front of Samuel, Samuel was saying, okay, in fact, the first one that came, God told Samuel that he shouldn't look at um, his countenance or something. That he shouldn't look at him, that that's not him. And after they all came out and Someone has to ask um, David's father, are these all your sons? He said, no. That the last one is at the field watching over the sheep. So imagine someone who was in the field taking care of his, of his father's flocks. They now had to go and bring him. They had to send him. In fact, to, for you to know how the grace that David received was, Samuel said he was not going to sit down until David comes in. You can imagine the prophet, he said he was not going to sit until they bring David. So they now had to send someone to go and bring David. And he was there standing until David came in and he was anointed king. So when you talk about grace, that was why I, I agreed with what um, Sheon said. Sheon said, um, um, bring something big coming out of little thing. So imagine a shepherd from being a shepherd boy to being a king. In the morning, he was a shepherd boy. By the evening, he was anointed a king. So that's to tell you grace. That is the work of grace. That is the work of grace upon David's life. So that is an example of God's grace at work. You know, things that you did not expect. You did not even deserve it. What has David done? to deserve that position. So, you know, it's something you don't deserve. It's not something you worked for, but grace found in. So that was what happened to David. So I've given you an example. Tishé and brother, I want you to concentrate, please. Thank you. So I've given you an example of where grace is at work in the life of David. And we can see even all through his life, grace was at work because, you know, he was close to God. Even God referred to him as a man after his own heart. He was close to God and God established him. He will go to battle, he will fight and he will win. God's grace was abounding in his life. It was not just God anointing him as the king, but all through the life of David, even when he sinned and he did a lot of terrible things, but God's grace still found him. He was always quick to accept his fault and he would always go back to God and ask for forgiveness. That was why God referred to him as a man after his own heart. And we can see God's grace at work in his life, all true. So he kept on growing in grace. It's not that, okay, when he became king, that was all God did for him. All the other things he did, the grace of God was at work in David's life. So apart from David, there are lots of people. Look at Joseph, for example. Joseph in the Bible. Joseph was from, he's from a rich family, 
Joseph was from a rich family because the Bible recorded that his father loved him and even made him a, um, a robe of what color? What did the Bible say? Who will remind me? Hello. Is it that we don't know? Hello, children. Are you listening? Yeah. Yes. God, um, his father made him a robe of many colors. A beautiful robe. What is it? Oh. A robe is like a cloth that they used to wear yeah. in those days. So it's not as if he came from a poor family. And we he saw what happened to him. Family. Yes. And we saw what happened okay. to him. He was even, okay, now look at it this way. David and Joseph. Joseph had a dream. David did not have a dream. But Joseph, he had a dream. And what was Joseph's dream? He dreamt that... He will be the king. He, yeah, he, he, he did not say he was going to be king. He no. said he saw his brothers bowing down. Bowing down to him. And you know... What happened afterwards? The brother got jealous of him. And one day, when God, when, when his father, sorry, when his father sent him to go and check his brothers in the field, you know, in those days, they, they, what they normally do is they always have um, 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 flocks. So their children, the older ones, will go out to look after their father's flock. But in the case of David, the older ones were homo. It was David, the youngest, that is always looking after his father's flocks. But in the case of Joseph, Joseph was not the youngest because Joseph had a brother. But in his own case, it was his older brothers that were out looking after their father's flock. So one day, his father sent him out to the field to go and check on his brothers to see how they are faring. And when he was going, the brothers spotted him as he was coming near them. And they plotted against him. And they plotted against him because they, they were now jealous. You know, as children of God, we should not be jealous of each other. You should not be jealous that your brother or your sister is doing better than you. Everybody has their own time. That is one thing I want you to understand. Don't be jealous that someone is this and you are not this. They became jealous. They became jealous of, of Joseph. Some of them, even Tisha and Sesshesi, please, I want you to concentrate, please. Okay, sit up. Yeah, thank you. So, you know, they became so jealous and they even, they plotted against him. Some even suggested that they kill him. And some was like, oh, no, don't let us kill him. Let us throw him inside a well. That was how they dug and they chew him there. And while they were still there, they saw people going to Egypt. They were just going, they said, oh, instead of us throwing him there, why not let us sell him? At least we will still have money. That was how they sold Joseph and they shared the money. So what did they do to the rope? The, the rope of many colors that the father, they now killed one of the lamps that they were watching over. They now soaked the robe inside blood. They took it back to their father to tell their father that he was killed. Meanwhile, they sold Joseph to Egypt. And we saw what happened to Joseph. Joseph got to Egypt. He was in prison. He was, he was working in Potiphar's house. He was working in Potiphar's house. And he was there. He was just doing his own. He was being a good boy, someone that fears the Lord, someone that loves the Lord. You know, he was not angry. He was not angry with his brothers. But we see they, the brothers planned evil for him. And we saw how God turned that evil around in the course of Joseph's life. God turned that situation around. They sold him to be a slave. He was a slave in Potiphar's, in Potiphar's house and he was there. And Potiphar's wife now even did something bad. She did something bad. She now roped Joseph into it. 
She wanted Joseph to sin against God. And Joseph said, never. And Joseph was able to flee from that. We saw what Joseph did. That is what God wants us to do. We shouldn't say, okay, fine. Joseph's boss was not there. His master was not there. But what he did was not because of his masters or because of what his master has done. It was not because of his master, but because of the fear of the Lord in his life. He feared the Lord. It was not about his master or his master's wife. But he said he will never do this and sin against the Lord. And we saw what happened. Potiphar's wife robbed him and the, he, Potiphar came in and he was so angry. The next thing, Joseph was in the prison. So imagine someone that dreamt, he had a dream that his brothers were bowing down to him. And the next minute he was in the prison. The next, the next thing was he found himself in the prison. So what do you, what do you think will be going on in Joseph's, Joseph's mind? Like, uh -uh. is it that the dream is taking me backward or what? Because he dreamt that he, he was going to be a great person. And now the opposite is happening to him. But even at that, God's grace found him while he was in the prison. So imagine, see, while he was in the prison, God's grace found him. And we saw how he came out and how um, Pharaoh, yes, how the king was restless. And it was only Joseph who could translate the king's dream. And we saw from prison, imagine someone that was in the prison today in the morning and by evening time, he became the prime minister. So if that is not grace, tell me what is it, what it is. You see, see that transformation. Imagine someone that was in the prison in the morning and by evening time, he has already became the prime minister of, of Egypt. Even his brothers, if they are told they, if they are told the brothers back home that your brother is now the prime minister in Egypt, though, do you think they would believe? Nah, no, they won't, because they never expected him to become the prime yeah. minister. He was sold out as a slave. So we see the grace of God manifesting in his life. The grace of God preserved Joseph all through the trying times, and even at that, you know, he wasn't angry. When his brothers came, it was not, this did not just happen in a week or two weeks so, or in three weeks so. It was years. It was years because he was in prison for a long time before he came out and before he became prime minister. So imagine, even the brothers would think, oh, maybe he should be dead by now because he was sold out as a slave. But God took him from that position, that slave position and took him and he became the prime minister. And that dream still came to pass. So that is what we call the grace of God. Things that you cannot do naturally. Things that you cannot do naturally. Things that people will hear and they will say, how come? How, how, tell me how it happened. That is what we call grace. It's an empowerment from God to do something. When something big, comes out of something little. Nobody would have ever thought that someone they sold out as a slave is now the prime minister. And imagine his brothers now coming back to him to ask for food. In fact, they came to him to buy food. They saw him, they couldn't recognize him. That is grace. Someone that was sold out, have you seen a slave before? If you have seen all these old, old films that they used to show on TV, when you see a slave, they hardly wear any clothes. Whether in the cold or whether it's the weather is very hot or anything, you hardly see them with clothes. They will just cover their private parts and they are always walking. That is slaves. Somebody sold their slaves as a, as a slave. And after that, he now went to prison to worsen the situation. You know someone that is a slave, at least the person is still outside. 
your master is sending you. Oh, yeah, go and do this for me. Take the, um, take the, go and milk the sheep, the cows. Go and do this. Go and wash the horses. Go and do this. Go and do that. They're always sending slaves. At least they are working. But someone that is in the prison, do you think that person, there's no freedom. You know, they are just in the, he's just in the prison there. But we see how God transformed what his brothers thought for evil for him. Tisha and Shesi. Tisha and Shesi. I can see you. I want you to sit down, please. So we can see how God transformed Joseph's life from a slave to a prisoner. And from a prisoner, he became the prime minister of Egypt. So that is what we call grace. That is the work of grace. That is the grace of God upon his life. It was not all the people that were in the prison that became prime minister. Some that were in the prison, definitely they would have, as in maybe passed out a law or something that, okay, or maybe after um, sitting in the court, they would have told them that they are guilty of what of the crime they could they, okay. they they committed and they would have maybe executed them that is how prison works but joseph god's grace kept joseph all through the time he was in the prison he did not fall sick he did not die in the prison he wasn't executed god kept him and god brought him out and what the brothers thought for evil god turned it around for good and you see, even when the brothers came, they couldn't recognize him because they never expected to see him on that seat. But when he saw them, he recognized them. He even had pity on them. So imagine when somebody has done something wrong. If Joseph was to count all the experience he went through, do you think he was supposed to forgive his brothers? It wasn't, it wasn't supposed to, because if you think about it, I did not offend you, I did not do anything to you, yet you sold me out, yet I was in the prison, on what I did not do. If he was angry, everybody will understand that, uh -uh, no, he should be angry because of what his brothers did, for he was not angry. He welcomed them, he disguised, and he asked for his brothers and we know what happened afterwards. So that is the grace of God. We can see those two examples. David, from a shepherd boy, he became king. Joseph, he was just a boy. He was sold to slavery, from slavery to prison, from prison. You can see. So it's not that what they did, they deserved to become prime minister or to become king, but God's grace found them. Just like I said, there were lots of people that were in the prison that did not become prime minister. There were lots of people that died in the prison when Joseph was there. There were lots of people that did not make it out of the prison. It's not as if they have done something wrong or Joseph has done something better than them, but that is where the grace of God comes in. So even David, a lot, of, a lot of young boys too, they were watching after their father's flocks. His brothers were home. In fact, more handsome than, than David. When Samuel saw the first brother of David, he was like, oh, this must be the one. And God told him he should not look at his countenance or something. But when David came, they described that David had a red skin with a brown, some, it was described in the Bible. So, you know, that is the grace of God. God did not say, oh, because his brothers were older or because they are more finer than me. No. There were other, other boys outside. There were other um, people looking after flocks. But God's grace did not fi find them. It was David. From shepherd boy, he became king of Israel. So that is what grace is all about. Grace is God empowering you to do something, something you don't believe, something you can't even think of, that people will, so those people that heard that Joseph from slave, from being sold out to slavery is now the prime minister. What do you think they will say? They will say, hey, tell me you are joking. It's a lie. 
tell me blah, blah, blah. A lot of things. Remember, okay, let's bring it to our, to, 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 to the present time. We remember when Obama became the president of United States. Yeah, it was the first black person to become the president. Since the inception of United States, they had never, no black, no black, no black um, president. Obama became the first black president. It was grace. Now they have a VP that is also a black and she's the first black vice president of the United States. So it's the grace of God that makes us achieve things that ordinarily you will say, no, it's not possible. That is the grace of God in action. So I hope we understand what I've been trying to say. Uh -huh. Thank you for this picture, Barack Obama, America's first black president. So, so far we don't have any black, it's still the first. I hope one of these days, God willing, our children, you children, you will be great in life and God's grace will speak upon your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so I think with all those things we discussed, do you now understand what grace is? Yes. Is it clear what grace is? Yep. Yep. So I just had to yep. um, I just had to make all those examples for you to understand what we are talking about when we talk about grace. So that is the grace of God. The grace of yeah. God helps you to achieve what you cannot ordinarily do. So that's the grace of God on those people. So there are lots of other people in the Bible that experience God's grace. So next week, you have two assignments. And please, I want you to work on it. You guys are home now. So I told you first, when next you want to watch a cartoon, don't watch a cartoon. Just type in my book of Bible stories. You will see a lot of stories drop down on your YouTube or internet channel. Oh, okay. Click on any of the stories. Next week, I'm going to ask you which of the stories you watched. Then secondly, as you are watching, take note of those people that experienced grace of God upon their lives. Take note of those people. I will ask. Even if I'm not going to take you next week, I will tell the teacher to ask you. So you should be able to give examples of those people that experience God's grace upon their lives. You know, we've made an example now. We've made two, we have, we've had two examples. So I want you to give more examples and think of how the grace of God is working in our lives. So that would be all today. We, okay, we are five minutes late. So, okay, so there's a question here. Which of these sentences is correct? So I want you all to answer this question, okay? Please, I want you all to attempt this question. Joseph had seven brothers. David had 11 brothers. Joseph lied against Potiphar's wife. David had seven brothers. So I want you to choose the one that is correct and submit. Okay. Please check your so chat. So can we all Let's see that? Chat. Just click on the right, um, on the correct sentence and submit. Why is, why is this wrong? Yours is what? What if it's, it's wrong? Also wrong? What's also wrong with, I don't even know several words in my Bible. I just. Okay. What so a now, which of the sentences is correct? Joseph had seven brothers. So 22% speak that. David had 11 brothers. 33%. Joseph lied against Potiphar's wife. 22.2. David had seven brothers. So who is going to volunteer? Which one do you think is correct? David had 11. I want to volunteer. David had David 11, 11, 11 brothers. David had 11 brothers. David had 11 brothers. David had 11 brothers. David had 11 brothers. Is that the correct one or the um, wrong one? 
correct one. Which is the correct one? David yeah. had 11 brothers, really? Yes. Okay, yes. that is wrong. David did, not have, David did not have 11 brothers. So did Joseph lie against Potiphar's wife? No. Yes, Joseph did not lie. It was Potiphar's wife that lied against Joseph. So they said Joseph had seven brothers. Is that true? Yes. 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 Yeah. Are you sure? No. I'm David sure. had seven brothers. Which of them had seven brothers? Easy. Oh, I'm still opening it. Opening what? The the host. Why are you opening the host? Yeah. I'm listening. Who had seven brothers? Uh, David. Uh, okay. Twenty-two for seven. So David has seven brothers. Okay. Oh. okay. So the correct answer is David. It was Joseph that had 11 brothers. It was Joseph that had 11 brothers. Okay? Not David. Okay. Do you understand? Yes. Yes. Okay. So David had how many brothers? David had... 11. No? Seven. Yes, I think. Girl. Yes, David had seven. So with him, I think I makes think. eight. But it was Joseph that had eleven brothers. It was Joseph that had eleven brothers, not David. So do we now know which one is the correct answer? Yeah. yeah. David it's had Dennis, seven brothers. Car. David had seven brothers. Oh, the last oh, one is David had seven brothers plus him making eight. But it was Joseph that had 11 brothers, not David. Yeah. Okay. Do you now understand? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, tomorrow, whose birthday is it tomorrow? Tom's birthday. Tom's birthday. Me. Tomorrow is Muiwa's birthday. And Arata. And who? Arata. Eh. Hey. But she's, is, is he or she on the yes, Arata. Arata's birthday is tomorrow as well. Oh, okay. So we have two celebrants in the house. Wow, that's a good one. So we are going to pray for them. So, Muyiwa, I think you're online. Can we see your face? Birthday boy. Yeah. Yeah. So we are now going to pray and... We will sing happy birthday in advance and we will okay. say the grace and close. Okay. So, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In the mighty Amen. name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank, thank you God. for bringing us together. We thank you for teaching us. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that will teach us more about your word. Father, accept our thanks and praises in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you for Muyiwa and Areta. We I'm thank you. We thank you for adding another year onto their lives. Amen. Father, we return all glory to you. Father, accept our thanks and praises in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we commit them into your holy hands, O oh Lord. As they had another year tomorrow, Father, we pray that your grace will be upon their lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. You will uphold them, you will strengthen them, and you will establish them in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray that they shall move from one level of glory to another level of glory. They will never know a better yesterday. In the name Amen. Of we pray for many more years in good health, in peace of mind, 
in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And Amen. Almighty God, we pray for all the children online and we use them as a point of contact to those who couldn't join. We pray, oh Lord, that your excellent spirit will rest upon each and every one of them in the name of Jesus. Amen. And Lord, we pray that they will continually function in your grace, oh Lord. We pray that your grace will abound in their lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. As we go this Friday, we pray that you will bring us all back next week to study more at your feet in the name of Jesus. Amen. We cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. So let us sing happy birthday to Muiwa. Happy birthday to you. any announcements please sister mm. dami um, no, no, no. okay so let us share the grace in fellowship the Amen. Somebody praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hello, children. Before you leave, remember this Sunday is Mother's Day. Yes. So remember this Sunday is Mother's Day. Yeah. I'm now giving you a clue. On Sunday morning, make sure you say something nice to mommy, okay? Okay. Make sure you wish mommy happy Mother's Day. You know, mom, she has done quite a lot of things for you. She's always there. She's, your, you know, taking care of you and doing everything possible to make you happy. So remember to say something nice to her on Sunday, okay? Okay. Yes. Okay. And remember your assignments, please. Okay. 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 Yeah, thank okay. you. Okay. Bye. 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 Mm -hmm. Can you leave us in here?